All right. So um, most of you know me. Most of you have had me for some other classes. Maybe a couple haven't, but um, so you can call me Grafton. That's my first name. I'll call you by your first name. Um, don't call me Dr. Grafton. That's like Dr. Bob. Um, you know, uh, if you call me doctor, you got to call me Dr. Eliason. Um, but Grafton's fine. Um, the, uh, because it's so warm and we're missing four or five people, um, I'm going to record going over the syllabus and talk about the class and what's on D2L. Um, then we're going to do a brief introduction, which will not be recorded. Um, and I'm going to check after I record this. I believe I have the first lecture recorded. Um, so you can watch that from the comfort of your air conditioned couch. And uh, and we'll have a lot more to do next week. Um, so what I was what I was thinking about this class, because it's a writing intensive class, um, I was I thought we would do all the same assignments, but lower the page number of required pages. Um, so yeah, you'll you'll get the same flavor for the research. You just won't have to write as much, um, which I think is acceptable for seven weeks. Um, there are three different larger assignments, and um, I only uh, really need one assignment for me, the other two are for KCREP. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Um, oh, yeah, so my teaching philosophy is basically, uh, you know, I want you to leave knowing the material, whatever that takes. Um, I'm not giving exams in this course. It's all writing. So you have the opportunity to rewrite something. We're also going to edit our lit reviews together uh, and, and, um, and read over uh, the article critiques together. So if you need to fix something, you can make changes and everybody can help each other. Like, this is really like my dream graduate class. It makes me feel like I'm in graduate school. People working together, doing research, talking about whatever they're researching, helping each other edit their papers. Um, you know, I, I feel like you're doing graduate work in this class. Not that the rest of the classes you aren't, but, you know, um, writing and researching has kind of that feel for me of a graduate class. Um, the other thing is, you know, I never liked taking a class where I felt like I was doing work, but I, like if I wrote a paper, I might never use that paper in the future. So I felt like it was kind of busy, busy work, you know. So Whatever topic you choose, I'd like you to be able to use it, uh, use your research with your future clients. Um, so um, the other place you might be able to use this, if you're interested, is you might be able to present it at a conference, either as a poster or a lecture. Um, it might lead to a publication. Um, maybe, maybe some of you have had Jake Wheatley for a class and, um, he was years ago, this shows my age years ago, he was sitting right where you are. And, uh, he, he did some fantastic research, uh, on terminal illness and recovery and kind of dealing with the grief and loss issues and then being healed. 
Um, and uh, we submitted that to um, the International Congress of Psychology. And uh, so we got to go and present in Paris. And uh, then he went by himself and presented it in London. And uh, he got funding for it through the school. It didn't pay for everything, but it paid quite a bit. Um, and then uh, I'm sure that writing, all his writing helped him to get accepted to a doctoral program. If you're thinking about going on in school, um, our master's degree does not require a thesis. And in fact, if you requested to do a thesis, we don't really recommend it. Uh, the reason for that is because we did have a lot of people who signed up to do a thesis, but because of everything else that is required, over 50% did not finish their thesis. Uh, and then they weren't able to graduate on time. Um, so we really don't recommend doing a thesis. So if you are thinking about going on in your education, maybe not immediately, but sometime, they're going to request a writing sample. And this is the class where you can create that writing sample. Um, I know a lot of students who, uh, so just, just last year, um, Jessica, Keys, um, she has a different last name now, but she presented at PCA on uh, yeah. grief and loss uh, and miscarriage. And she she researched that in, in the research class. Um, we had two students, um, Casey and Sammy, they just graduated and they did research on um, career counseling for people of retirement age, uh, which is really a, a segment of the population that doesn't get a lot of attention. Um, and they presented at PCA. Uh, Alex Pepper, he presented a poster at PCA, and his was on uh, counseling athletes who were not able to become professional athletes, but so much of their identity was tied to their sport. And they had ho so many hopes and dreams of becoming a professional athlete. Uh, there's also kind of this grief and loss of a dream uh, that um, they had to deal with. And that could have been because of injury, because uh, maybe they didn't have the stats to become a professional, whatever it might have been. Uh, so that was just last year. And um, and then Alex and Casey's and Sammy's, theirs are going to be new chapters in a career book. And then Jessica is going to submit hers as an article for a grief and loss journal. And um, so there's lots of possibilities. And you don't have to do any of that. You could just get three credits and move on to graduation. Uh, but just in case you needed something, if you if you wanted to go on, um, you know, this is an opportunity to get something to submit to maybe another uh, doctoral application or something like that. Um, okay, so, you know, You've heard this from me if you've had me before, but like I said before, I'm more worried about you mastering this knowledge and having the ability to do research and understand research. And if you're a counselor out in the field and you have a client that has a diagnosis uh, with which you are unfamiliar, um, you might have to do a little research on the best treatment methodology for them. Uh, so all of this knowledge, you may not want to publish something, you may not want to present something, but you're going to need to do research as a professional counselor. Uh, there's lots of diagnoses that I had never worked with before. Um, 
And I needed to do a little research, get a little more training in order to better, to best meet the needs of those clients. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope by the end of this class, you'll feel that you've created some useful model that you can use as a therapist with future clients. So the way I organize this class, it's almost exactly half the number of weeks than a normal semester. Normal semester is 14 or 15, depending on the breaks. Um, and uh, this is seven. So what I decided to do was I'm just going to give one week's lecture in the first half and the second week's lecture in the second half of the class. We'll take a break in the middle. Um, so it's easy for me to just do two lectures. Um, the tough part is your assignments because you don't have as many weeks. And the best I could do with them was shortening the amount of pages that you have to write. Um, but rather than having two weeks in between assignments, you have a couple weeks where you'll have assignments due each week. Um, I also cut out all the discussion boards. There's no discussion boards in this class for the summer. Um, so that should save a little bit of time. Um, and since it's face to face, you're going to get to know each other anyway. Um, okay. So let's let's look at the let's look at the syllabus, and um, let's see. So the book, um, it's on edition four. Uh, a long time ago, a professor named Tanya Tinsley and myself um, looked through every. Uh, research book on the market because we realized most counseling individuals, people going into counseling, future counselors, math and stats might not be their forte. It wasn't my forte. Um, some of you, we have had math teachers, we have had researchers, but I would say, you know, a lot of people are uh, worried about this class because there might be some statistics or something like that. We picked a book that is easily uh, understood by the average person who wants to become a counselor. There's really almost no statistical formulas in this book. It's primarily terminology. So understanding what reliability means, understanding the three different types of averages, things like that. Um, so it's, it's leaning more towards terminology, how to do research, how to read a research paper or a journal article and understand whether it's a good one or not a good one. Um, and we will have one class out of seven where all I do is go over um, easy ways to solve research statistic problems that might appear on the comps or the, or the um, NCE. So I'll give you all kinds of hints on if they give you such and such problem, this is how you remember it. Um, so we'll do that one class. And uh, so this class in combination with the assessment class should give you what you need to know to pass that section of the comps and the NCE. The other thing I gave you, uh, and it's on D2L, I gave you my own notes, not notes for this class. I gave you my master's notes uh, that I studied for, for the comps and the NCE for research stats and assessment. Um, 
And I passed it just by memorizing those notes. So you've got my notes um, to study. Uh, so you can use them as, as a study guide. Um, yeah, so the book, you can get any edition other than, you can't get edition number one, but two, three, or four. So you should be able to get a used edition or an ebook edition, uh, two, three, or four uh, from Amazon or download the ebook, but you could get a used paperback for like five bucks plus shipping. If you do that, if you save that money and get an older version, you know, uh, splurge on shipping. It's only a seven week class. So get that book in the mail quickly. If you spend extra money, spend it on shipping. Um, but pretty much the, uh, I did notice that one chapter was added, one new chapter, but it's not a necessary chapter. It's just additional information uh, in book four. And in book three, the chapters were rearranged. So the numbers aren't the same, but the titles of the chapters are the same. So if you say, oh, this doesn't look like chapter three, just look at the title and find it that way. So uh, he did rearrange the order in, in uh, edition three, and he added a new chapter in book four. Um, but other than that, the chapters are pretty much the same. Um, any supplemental readings I put on D2L? The only other guide, and you, you know, there are alternatives that um, you can click on in the syllabus, but a lot of people like the APA manual. You can use either the latest, the syllabus says you got to use the latest APA style, but most um, publishers accept the most recent and the last one. So the most two recent ones you can use. Um, normally not a lot changes between APA manuals, just little things. Um, and I'll tell you, the reason things change in APA manuals really has a lot to do with um, computers and what Adobe Acrobat can do. Um, so for let me give you an example. So um, it used to be when I went to school that you had to put two spaces between sentences and now you only have to put one. And um, you used to have to and you might still have to, uh, underline titles. So the reason for that is because back then they didn't have computers that could full page justify. Um, they needed to know, easily see where the end of sentences occurred. The underlining of titles was because uh, they, most typewriters did not have an italic setting. So they would underline it and say, hey, this needs to be in italics. When you publish this, everything underlined gets put in italics. Um, so there's lots of arcane reasons, uh, you know, why the APA had certain rules. And it was really for typesetting when you send things in for publishing. Now, we can do most of those things ourselves. Um, so, uh, you know, either the late seventh edition or the sixth edition of the APA might be helpful, but now you can find most of the examples of what, how do you cite a journal article? How do you cite a book? How do you cite a citation that you found in somebody else's book? Um, most of those examples you can find online. 
for free. There are some links in the syllabus that will tell you where to go to get that help. Um, all right. So um, you can read the KCREP uh, rubric. It's many pages. I'm sure you'll find it interesting. Um, for Tavera, for every class, every student writes a one paragraph response to the class. It's not an evaluation of the class. Maybe you couldn't stand me or this class, but even the worst class, you can get something out of it for yourself, even if it's what not to do. But um, so this one paragraph response to a class is about you. It's about what you learned, what you got out of class, how you grew as a counselor. And you upload that for every class. The assignment you upload is different for every class. For this class, the assignment you're going to upload is your article critique. Um, I wanted everybody to upload their final paper, but um, the article critique will be the same no matter who teaches this class. And that's why they want you to upload that. So those are the two things to upload to Tavera at the end of the class. Um, underneath our, the whole department adopted kind of a grading scale so that every class has the same grading scale, like pluses and minuses and things like that. Um, you know, my goal is for you to get an A. That means you know the material you need to know. Um, I always tell the story about um, when I was on uh, the outcomes committee for the university and different departments would submit their outcomes and they'd say 70% of our students passed the state examination for certification. We don't need to change anything. And they, Every department hates me because my response is, what are, what are you talking about? What are you going to do about those 30% of the students that did not pass? 70% doesn't mean that you, know, you don't have to change anything. In my mind, it means that you have to change a lot. 99% of our counseling students pass uh, the comps. So... Um, and if they don't, it's just because they don't study it. Uh, so, you know, I think that, um, and then they say, you know, then they'd always ask, well, what's, what's your percentage? Do you have a, a bell curve in grading? I'm like, no way. I have almost 100% A's. That's how good of a teacher I am. They're like, uh, you're an easy grader. All right. So that's your goal. Learn the material, get an A. Um, rewrite it if you need to. The uh, right below the grading scale is our links to APA style guides. You can click on them from D2L. Then there's um, the course assignments. I'm going to go over these a little bit but we're gonna go over them in much greater detail. There's another um, rubric for KCREP that talks about um, how we meet each one of their standards. There's a thing for Title IX reporting. If you have a disability, I will be happy to accommodate you. Go to the Office for Students with Disabilities. Have academic integrity. Um, no plagiarism. Um, I never had a problem with plagiarism in this class. It's just as easy to quote something as it is to plagiarize. Um, so, uh, you know, just quote extensively, cite extensively. Um, and, uh, I was always so worried about being accused of plagiarism that I, I cited something every paragraph. 
Um, the uh, but because many class of classes, uh, not mine, but many classes have had a problem with plagiarism. Um, there is a requirement to take anti-plagiarism training. And let me tell you, this is not an e I, I took it. It is not easy because they've got like trick questions, you know. Um, so and it, it, at the end, it doesn't tell you which question you got mm. wrong. You just have to guess, oh, wonder which one I got wrong and go change it and take the test again. Um, but yeah, uh, you've got to, you know, download the certificate to that. There's a link in the syllabus. It does have a due date, but honestly, for the plagiarism certificate, you just have to get it to me before the end of the seven weeks. Um, it might be good to get it out of the way because it is just a ha hassle. Um, there is a piece about online discussion boards, but like I said, there are no discussion boards for this summer class. Okay. So as we move through this very short semester, there are the next part of the syllabus talks about each assignment. We're going to go over each one of these before they're due. Um, but uh, so there's instructions that I wrote, and then there's a rubric of how they're graded that I did not write. Um, but the only thing you really need to know is just follow the instructions. Um, and then let's see if we have a schedule for the semester. Okay, yeah, so it says course outline schedule, and you'll see that there are double numbers. And that's just because I combined two weeks at a time. So you'll see week one, week one, week two, week two. And that's just how we make the course take seven weeks, okay? So over on the left, you'll see which week we're on, which class. You'll see in the next column, that's what we're covering. Um, you'll see the, there's a column for readings. And it might say chapter one or chapter 18, but depending on what edition of the book you have, just go by the title of it. It might be a different number. Um, and then there are due dates, and those are the most important dates. So if we look at this under week two, due, it says topic, the topic you plan on using for references, article reviews, literature reviews. Um, so our goal next week is for you to pick a topic. And once you pick a topic, everything else is going to use that same topic. Because if you, use, if you do a, um, an article critique, I want you to be able to use what you wrote for that for your lit review. And your lit review is going to go into your final paper. So each week we're going to do part of your assignment so that by the end you can put them all together into one final paper. Other than statistics, the thing most people are worried about this class is it's, it's a longer paper. And... Uh, but if we do it in little sections, it won't seem like such a long paper. Um, the longest assignment is the literature review, and that's not at the end of the seven weeks. That's somewhere around week four, maybe. Let's see, lit review. 
Article review and references are week three. We'll talk about that next week. Needs assessment weeks four. Lit review is week five. So that's the longest part of your paper, the literature review. So let's talk about how this research class is different than maybe an undergraduate research class. An undergraduate research class, you're researching what other people have done. And you're kind of talking about that. You're presenting the facts that you found. The difference between that type of research and this type of research is that you need to come up with something new. It, if it's a lot of times, you know, what's been done already doesn't work. Uh, so um, now you, so there's two things that you can do. You can either come up with a brand new idea and there won't be any references for your new idea, um, but you can still present it uh, and use it. Or you can look at what's been done in a number of different ways. So for instance, you can look at things that have worked. You can look at things that have not worked. You can look at things that have worked on symptomology under a different diagnosis, and you think, oh, that symptomology has a lot to do with the diagnosis or issue that I'm going to be working with. Maybe I'll take what they used in some other issue or diagnosis, and I'll apply it to my issue or diagnosis. Um, you can do things that haven't been tried yet. Like there's a lot of new things like mindfulness, meditation, all kinds of stuff. There's, um, you know, there's equine therapy. There's, you know, all kinds of new ideas. Um, there's old ideas that are becoming more popular. You know, there's Reiki. Um, there's uh, yoga. You know, there's lots of things like that. You can use them, but here's the thing. You also have to include traditional counseling therapies. So you can include mindfulness and CBT, CBT to get rid of irrational thoughts. Um, so you can combine things uh, to make a new comprehensive model. So... Yep, you can use any kind of new idea. Um, you can make up your own. Uh, but you also have to include a researched traditional therapeutic application um, and include some articles on that. Uh, so you'll have to combine some things. Um, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. And the other different thing is after you do your lit review, which looks at other people's articles, you're going to decide, okay, I'm going to take everything I researched, everything I learned, maybe add a couple new ideas and come up with a comprehensive treatment program for eight to 16 weeks. And that's going to be your model. And that's what's different than undergrad. It's like, you take research a step further. You create something new, something that you think will work with your clients, will help people. That's everything we learn in counseling is about helping people, even research. You know, the reason we do research is to figure out what will better help people, what will work, what doesn't work. Um, it contributes to the field. Let's see. So, yeah, for next week, um, what we're going to be doing is you're going to don't just come up with one eye, one topic, you know, come up with a number of different topics, you know. Um, and as you phrase your possible topics and and we'll we'll take turns we'll talk about each of your topics um we want your topic 
to be something like a treatment for, you know, uh, you're not looking at like um, what treatments have been done for schizophrenia. You're looking at a new comprehensive treatment model for schizophrenia. So um, kind of what are you going to add to help this population? There have been some really interesting ones. So for instance, um, last semester we had somebody, I guess they had been to a number of different therapists and so many therapists are not familiar with contemporary terminology and language for the trans population. They weren't familiar with um, not so much treating uh, this population for being trans, but for helping them to deal with maybe prejudice or trauma or, you know, society's a difficult place to live in if you're different than the norm. Um, so, you know, it's all of the different things that go into that personal experience. And they found that uh, a lot of therapists weren't sure where to go with them. So their model was they were going to create a training program for therapists uh, to help that population, whatever they were struggling with. Uh, so that, that was really a new idea because I mean, I even looked at the research and there was not a lot out there for that. Um, let's see, another topic was uh, helping uh, individuals who were leaving foster care uh, in their early 20s, so 18 to 23. Um, a high percentage of these individuals end up homeless uh, using drugs, breaking the law, uh, being unsuccessful. Um, and uh, so what can be done to help that population as they move from the foster care system, which we know isn't always the best, uh, to independent living? What can be done to help them in that uh, moving from one, one uh, life uh, to an independent life. Um, I put a lot of examples on D2L. Um, I put um, an example of a final paper that includes a lit review, population uh, issues, significance of the issues, um, it's got their lit review with the different questions. It's got their model. They did uh, they did the topic of um, PTSD, treating PTSD, and they came up with a comprehensive treatment model. Um, their paper was accepted to uh, PCA years ago, um, and they presented there. Um, all right, so let's let's just look. You don't have to look, but if you have a computer, you can. But you can just listen if you don't. But on the um, D2L page, week one is open. It's got the syllabus. The links are active to the APA uh, helping pages. Um, other things I uploaded. Um, I uploaded my notes. Um, you can download them and keep them. Um, I uploaded um, the student's paper. I uploaded the handout she created for her model. Um, so you can use, read that as a sample. Uh, it's also a good sample for APA style. You could look at her title page. Um, I uploaded some things I published, but 
I uploaded the rough draft and then I uploaded what the editor sent me back, how it was edited. And I uploaded once a chapter for a book and then the edited version, they call it a proof. And then uh, the other one's an article and then the proof for that, just in case anybody wants to do that, you can see the progress of it. Don't worry about it. It's on like spirituality, but content doesn't matter. It's more about the process. Um, I uploaded my dissertation. And uh, just so you could see different graphs and charts and tables, the parts of it, um, this is like a mini dissertation, basically. Uh, let's look at page numbers. Let's see. So the journal article critique is only like two or three pages. We're not going to change that. But um, the, the literature uh, review, um, let's see if it has page numbers. Okay, so um, it says eight to 10 page literature review, summarizing and synthesizing what you've learned. Um, so basically, um, we're going to make it uh, eight pages, including title page, abstract, and references. So that brings it down to like five pages content. So I think that's doable in seven weeks. Yeah. So yeah, you can count the title page, the abstract, the references in that. All right. And uh, yep. So we're just next week I'm going to talk about references, but one assignment is just references. So we're actually going to start that in class. So Ryan Sittler, the librarian, is going to teach you how to use the library system. I'm going to teach you how to use Google Scholar. And uh, you can combine those. And uh, your goal is to come up with 12 references. So like one of your first assignments is just handing in a reference sheet. The reason we do that first is to just get you started looking up articles. Yeah. Because you can change, you can add to them. You, if you don't like one of the references, you can throw it out. You know, it's just to get the ball rolling. Um, all right. Yeah, we'll start that in class because we'll be in a computer room hopefully next week. Um, I'm just looking at anything else I can shorten. Um, that's about it, but that cut out three or four pages of that assignment. Um, the other thing I uploaded was the outline of the final paper. And as you write each section, because we're just going to do one section at a time, or I'm not going to say write this paper. We're going to just work on one section at a time. And, uh, but you can use that outline that I uploaded and keep those the titles of each section. You don't even have to change it. And all you have to do is fill in under each heading, basically. All right, that's the syllabus. And like I said, don't worry about detail for each assignment. We're going to do go over each assignment. We're going to do a lot of the assignments together. So a lot of this is collaborative. One thing I'd like you to think about, we're going to take a break, but one thing I'd like you to think about is um, you can work with a partner or you can work alone. It's whichever your preference is. Um, but 
you need to choose a partner tonight so that you can come up with a topic together or multiple topics and pick the best one next week. So see if you want to work with a partner. If you do, find a partner. Uh, we, we're only going up to pairs. We don't want three in a group um, unless somebody can't find a partner and we have an odd number of people, then we'll do three. Okay, any questions? Yeah. It's in the syllabus and you click on the link. It says there's a page that says plagiarism. Yep. And you're not going to get graded for it. They just want you to complete it. All right, let's take a 15 minute break. When we come back, we're just going to spend 30 minutes and introduce each other. I'm going to have some questions for you to answer when you introduce yourselves. And, uh, but mainly find a partner if you want a partner. Are you All right. Well, I've never asked that, so I guess we will. 